believe in taking risks in life. That's why I'm wearing white to make spaghetti and meatballs. Now, you could spend all day making sauce, or you could do it my quick and easy way and make the sauce and the spaghetti and the meatballs all in 35 minutes. And here's how. We're going to start by preparing some soft, fresh breadcrumbs for the meatballs. So I have two slices of my homemade whole wheat bread, which is soft. You can use white bread or a soft whole wheat, but it has to be soft like this. Okay? So we're going to put that in the food processor, and we're going to process what they call fresh breadcrumbs. Do not use dried breadcrumbs, for this. it has to be fresh breadcrumbs. So we'll process it for about 10 seconds, and that's how you make fresh breadcrumbs. So it's about three quarters of a cup of crumbs and two slices like that will do it. So we put those crumbs into a bowl. Okay, put this back. And to the breadcrumbs we're going to add a third cup of milk. Now I'm using 1% milk. You can use whole milk if you want, but I just use it to keep the calories down. So I'm going to stir it up just a little bit with a fork, kind of get it all in there. And while that absorbs this milk, while the bread absorbs the milk, we're going to go on and make the sauce, okay? Now, what I do is I like to have a smooth sauce. I'm going to use the same uh, food processor. If you don't have a food processor, uh, you can cut the bread into tiny little pieces and do the same thing, and you can puree the tomatoes in a blender, but I'm going to use the same uh, food processor. I'm using a 28... 28 ounce can of plum tomatoes. They make the best tasting sauce. I like it kind of smooth, so I'm going to puree the tomatoes first. All right, that's been maybe 20 seconds, and I think that's good to go, okay? All right, so I started my burner going. Now, let me just tell you about the, or my pot going. Let me tell you about the pot. You do need a pot that's at least seven inches across the bottom. So measure the bottom of your pot. It has to be seven inches across because you have to fit all the meatballs in there in, in one uh, layer. So, all right? So now we're going to make the sauce while the, the uh, breadcrumbs soak. And we're going to saute one clove of garlic, which I have in here. See that? I already pressed it. And a tablespoon of olive oil. So I'm going to put the olive oil in here. All approximate. It's just sauce, you know, but a tablespoon. But the reason that you want to use a generous amount of oil is because the oil helps the lycopene in the tomatoes absorb better into your system. and It's a good cancer protector. Okay, see the garlic is kind of gold now? That's the perfect time to add the uh, tomato. So there it's, it's been about maybe one full minute. Now we're going to add the uh, tomatoes. Okay. All right, so that's it. Tomatoes are in. Now we're going to add a few more ingredients and let this cook. Here's what we're going to add. We're adding a half, here's this right here. It's a half teaspoon of uh, Italian spice, like a combination of Italian seasonings, a half teaspoon, two teaspoons of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, they're going to go in here, okay, and some fresh pepper to taste, and well, you got to do the fresh pepper. Okay. All right, we'll stir that up. It's still bubbling, so we're just going to let it cook away here. And we're going to add some fresh basil, but we're not going to do it till the very last minute. And, oh, oh, fresh basil, fantastic. All right, so we'll turn it down just a little, let it simmer over here while we put together the meatballs, okay? Now, we have the, uh, the three quarters of a cup of soft, uh, fresh breadcrumbs. They've soaked in all that nice milk. Now we're going to add all of these ingredients here. First of all, it's an egg. One egg gets added. And then here's all the rest of the stuff. Very easy. It's a tablespoon of fresh parsley, a tablespoon of Parmesan, a tablespoon each. It's a half teaspoon of Italian spice, the same one that went into the sauce, a clove of garlic, and a quarter teaspoon of salt, okay? And of course, some fresh pepper to taste, okay? All right, so that's all the flavoring for the meatballs. We're gonna, you have to stir this before you add the meat, okay? Because it's, it's much better, it's much better way to incorporate all the flavors and everything so it's mixed in evenly. So there, that's it, okay. Now we're going to add a three quarters of a pound of ground beef and here it is right here. That goes in. Okay, simple. Now we're going to make some meatballs. Now I like to use gloves, but you know, I forgot my gloves again. I don't know how that happens. Every time I make a video, I forget my gloves. Anybody? Anybody? Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. You can do this by hand. I do it because I don't want to keep soaking my hands in water and drying them out, but just easier. Okay. So now we're going to combine all this. Sauce is bubbling nicely. We're going to combine all this. You have to do it by hand. And don't overdo it. You just kind of fold underneath and uh, like that and just kind of squeeze it until you see it that's fairly well incorporated. And I'm going to show you my trick for this, uh, this, uh, this recipe serves four people, two meatballs each, so we're going to be making eight meatballs, okay? Here's my little trick. You take the mixture, once it's all mixed up like that, that looks pretty good, okay? And in the bowl, I kind of uh, divide it in half like this, okay? And then I divide it in half again. It's not perfect, but it gives you a rough idea of how much you can use in each one. So each one of these sections is going to make two meatballs, okay? So you just make the meatballs, and these are about two inches across. And what I do is I put the meatballs on a plate or something, and I want to dump them all in the sauce at the same time. So there's one, about a two inch, two inches. So you shape all the meatballs first, and then we're going to drop them into the sauce. And the re there's two reasons why these meatballs are so soft. One is because we're using uh, fresh breadcrumbs and not dried, and the other is because they're going to cook in the sauce, and that just makes them taste better and makes them super, super soft. Okay? So let me finish up these uh, eight meatballs, and we'll put, it, we'll put them in the sauce. Okay, last meatball. Here it is. Didn't take very long. Now, here's my eight meatballs. As you can see, they're not perfect, but I consider meatballs like people. They're not all perfect, so, but they're close enough in shape. So now, we're going to drop them. and give the sauce a little stir here, and we drop them into the sauce, and that's it. Okay. Now, that's why you need that seven-inch uh, saucepan, to make sure that these get all uh, underneath the sauce, and then the sauce level is going to come up as the meatballs go in. So there's one, two, three, kind of gently, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now if they're not completely covered, you can just kind of tap them a little bit. And now this cooks for 20 minutes, and while those are, that's it. We're just going to add the basil at the end. While that's cooking, we make the spaghetti, and we're done. Less than 35 minutes. So the meatballs have been cooking now for about 10 minutes. The water's boiling. Time to cook the spaghetti. Now, the package says two ounces per person. What, if you're five? Three ounces, just for me. All right, the sauce is done. Look, just look at this. The meatballs are done. The sauce is done. It's nice and thick. Look at that. Here. There's one more thing to do though, and this is really important, fresh basil. You have to add at least two tablespoons of fresh basil. You just kind of slice it into little strips or pieces, it doesn't even matter. But this smells amazing. You just, this is so key. I think that's about two tablespoons. Fresh basil is key. There's nothing like this smell, but you have to do it last minute because you don't want it to cook too much. So we'll stir in the basil. Oh, it smells amazing. You got to come over. Okay, that's it. You just stir that in fresh. The spaghetti's done. Turn that off. We're going to drain the spaghetti. All right, I'll put it back in here. And the best way I find is to stir a little sauce into the spaghetti first so it has uh, red all through it. Just a little bit of sauce like that. And tongs are a good way to kind of stir the sauce into it. So it's all covered in red, okay? So there's my three ounce serving. That's not that much, come on, okay? Now to serve it, you got your spaghetti, you put your two meatballs on top, a little more sauce with that amazing basil. Look at that, ah! Okay, now, of course, if you're like me, there's still one more thing to do, a little bit of fresh Parmesan, okay? A little fresh parm. Oh my god. The spaghetti and meatballs is just the best thing in the world. All right. So now, there is a proper way to eat spaghetti, okay? You're supposed to use a spoon and a fork, and you go in and you kind of 
use the spoon and you twirl like that to get a nice little one bite, right, like that, which is fine if you're dining with the royal family. But then there's my way. And my way is you take the fork and you just twirl and twirl and twirl and shove it in. It's a time saver. Awesome. There are a lot of fancy ways to make garlic bread, but I like to keep it simple. A good loaf of bread, lots of fresh garlic, and a simple, easy recipe. And this one is really, really easy. Pizza is really about the crust, isn't it? Especially pan pizza. So how would you like to make the most amazing pan pizza and the easiest? No rolling, no kneading, no work, and you get this beautiful golden crispy crust.